Enjoying your tea? Tom plays the charismatic and sharp-witted Professor Geoffrey Hoyt, a consultant general surgeon. He sharp-witted in real life too, as I discovered when I reminded him medics would be highlighting controversial and topical medical issues. Well, yes, I suppose we, we are. Uh, but, you know, yes, but I mean, it is hard in, 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 in hospitals, isn't it? I notice in the hospitals, because I'm an actor, uh, now I've got a suit, of course, I'm often mistaken for a consultant. When I was, it was interesting that when I was shooting it, and I had a very expensive suit on. Oh, the reason I got the job, I should tell you, is that they had a very expensive suit left over from another series. And they said, can we get an actor to play Ho Hoyt who fits this suit? So anyway, I was walking down a real ward, because we do it in a real hospital, but we hire a ward. I was walking down a real ward, uh, all dressed up and made up as well. And it was amazing what happened. You know, people braced up in bed, and I blessed a few people and asked them how they were and checked their temperature and told them to pull themselves together no shilly shallying I couldn't be doing with people who gave in or died I said that death was weakness of character and instead of them calling for help you know they said well right okay all right doctor and it cheered them up no end I think actually doctors you see because they're doing the real thing they have to write their own scripts whereas the lovely thing about being an actor is someone skillful writes me my own writes me a script uh, which is nice. How is it for you, turning your hands to medical matters, standing there with a scalpel in your hand, but pretending to do... Well, I mean, um, I quite enjoyed it, you know, because, after all, uh, when you're a doctor, especially a consultant in a big hospital, you are a sort of godlike figure. Everyone defers to you. And I wanted to push it very far, because I'd done some research about these things. And uh, I wanted to play him... Uh, my character, Jeffrey Hoy, I wanted to play him really as a man who secretly was very obsessed with Tommy Cooper. And so that when he asked for the scalpel, uh, and he was all masked up, you could only see my eyes like that. And I thought it would be very nice to hold a scalpel. And everything is very tense, and they're playing Mozart, piano concerto number 21 or something, the second movement. And then I just go, just before I cut, I go, <coughs> <laughs> Did you but actually... The wouldn't let me. <laughs> Did you actually sort of sit in a real operation? Oh, yes, I've been to lots of operations. When I, by accident, when I was in the army in the 50s, I was in the medical corps. So I went to glamorous operations. I mean, not ingrown toenails or appendectomies or anything like that. I went to, uh, you know, really big stuff. Also, I worked in a mortuary, which gave me a certain amount of pleasure, but in the sense that it gave me the edge on everyone. Um, there's nothing like... A mortuary, is there, or a, a graveyard. I, I've got two graveyards around my house, and I look out in the morning, and I, I, so all my self-pity evaporates. I think, well, it could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> there is poor old shagged out Tom Baker running across the rocks and punting down the river. You're very unkind to yourself. But you, you played the part for seven years, and I'm yeah. wondering what you thought was the appeal of Doctor Who. I mean, he kept changing faces, he kept having all these adventures, and he kept winning. I, I suppose the appeal is, you know, is the sheer heroism of the part, isn't it? I mean, why does James Bond go on being, being, fun, uh, being uh, appealing to people? The people need different kinds of heroes, and Doctor Who, the formula, which is obviously stronger than the people who are in it, since no one has ever failed in it, you know, is a formula guaranteed for success, isn't it? There you have, in a, now, a very, very uncertain world, you have a hero who's not interested in violence or acquisitiveness or sex or war or whatever he's just kind of benevolent and also he is alien you know so this uh, set him aside i suppose really good as it was there was no competition you see was there not really well, although when you consider <sighs> that he still has all this appeal uh, and television has become more sophisticated uh, doctor who must have had something that that has endured all these years well, I mean, I think that the television that endures is the television, actually, in which the characters are realized and one actually still cares about them, as apart from just a curiosity value. I mean, Dad's army endures because, you know, it was so vividly realized. And those of us who remember something about those days or know something about history, look at it and you say, yes, that was marvelous. The techniques may improve, but nothing can ever lower people's desire to become involved with good characters, you know, with heroic or pretentious or silly characters. So I think it's the characterization that makes a thing endure. Otherwise, it just becomes a kind of uh, a lark, you know, from the past. <laughs> you weren't destined for a, a life on the stage. I think in your early teens, you, you entered a religious order with the intention of becoming a monk. Well, I mean, that's just a different kind of stage, really. I mean, everyone, you know, everyone is brought up with fantasies by whatever name you call them, whether it's called dreams or whatever it was, you know, and I wanted to be a hero and 
was growing up in Liverpool, not growing up, I was a very small child during the war. Um, and so, you know, one wanted to do heroic things. It was a time of great disturbance and drama. Uh, you know, houses were being blown up and neighbours were sometimes being killed. And this was all very exciting and gratifying. In fact, I've always been very fond of the Germans for bombing Liverpool. <laughs> because, you know, they really eased the boredom of, of being young. I mean, I didn't understand what the implications were, of course. But I do remember enjoying it all. Uh, and not knowing how to go on the next... Children don't know without advice, do they? Still, although they get more advice. Children don't know how to make... how to realise their dreams. Of course, that's the endless problem that everybody has. And children without education in poor areas particularly are, are, to, are handicapped in this way. And I didn't know how to do what I wanted to do, which was to go on telling tall stories and acting in them. In other words, going on the stage. I didn't know how to do that. And so the next thing I could do, someone came looking for heroes in something called a vineyard and started using wonderful emotive phrases like many are called and few are chosen and who'd like to be a hero. And I thought, well, that sounds all right. And I put my hand up. But I mean, looking back on it now, I probably would have put my hand up if they'd been recruiting for the Foreign Legion. You know, I was just a long way around to becoming Doctor Who. Well, the church is lost is definitely <laughs> our game. <laughs> Tom Baker, thank you very much. And good luck with what you're doing in future. Thank you.